Welcome to 7.1's Math Moment. Today, students learned about comparing ratios and took information from a ratio table and also showed that same information in a graph. So we're going to look at the first example where it says to complete the table and graph for the paint mixtures. So we have two different paint mixtures, offbeat orange and outstanding orange, and we have different ratios of red and yellow paint. So we need to complete the ratio table first before graphing it on um, the grid. So what we're going to do to help us with these ratios is create a factor puzzle. So I'm going to pull out the information that I have, so it's a little bit easier to work with. And this is a review from Unit 1, when we looked at different factor puzzles and we looked at the numbers that we have next to each other and thought about what factor do they have in common. Okay, well I know that 4 and 6 have 2's in common, so I kind of place them out to the side. Then I think 2 times what gives me 4. I know 2 times 2 gives me 4, so I write it above. If it comes, if it's um, at the top, it goes also straight down to the bottom. Alright, and then I'm going to think 2 times what gives me 6. I know 2 times 3 gives me 6. Again, it's at the top and it's going to come straight down to the bottom here with a 3. Now the reason we wrote these numbers down below is because it's going to help us figure out what the missing um, number is for that section. So 2 times what gives me 8, that would be 4. 4 shoots straight across to this side. 3 times 4 is 12, so I know that my missing number here is 12. So now that gives me another set of numbers that I can work with, 8 and 12 and something and 15. So again, I'm going to create another factor puzzle that I can work with and think about what do these numbers have in common. So now I'm looking at 8 and 12. And I know that they both have 4's in common. 4 times what gives me 8? That would be 2, so I put it down below. 4 times what gives me 12? That would be 3, so it comes down below. 3 times what gives me 15? That would be 5, so it shoots across. And then I just need to multiply these two numbers to find the missing number. 5 times 2 is 10, and that gives me my missing number of red paint. Now, we need to encourage students to use a strategy like a factor puzzle because lots of times when students see tables, they want to try and find a pattern. And with ratio tables, there might not be a pattern. For instance, here, um, students might think that they're counting by fours, but when we actually do the math, we um, go four, eight, and then 10. So it's not a true four pattern. So it's really important for them to use a factor puzzle um, or another strategy that they've learned in class in order to figure out what is missing in that ratio table. Because a ratio table is different than a rate table. It doesn't always have a pattern. All right, and then the next table, I'm gonna do the same sort of strategy where I've got two, eight, then something, and 28. I'm gonna create a factor puzzle and I'm going to pull out numbers that I know they have in common. So I know that 2 and 8, the only number they have in common is 2, so I'm going to put those off to the side. 2 times what gives me 2? That would be 1, so it's going to come down below. 2 times what gives me 8? That would be 4, so it's going to come down below. 4 times what gives me 28? That would be 7, so it shoots across. 7 times 1 is 7, so I know that's my missing number here. Then I get to create another factor puzzle with 7, I'm going to erase these numbers here so I have a little space, 7, 28, 9, and then something else to help me figure out what other numbers I'm missing here. So again, 7 and 28, I can just use the information that I had from this part of the table to help me know that they have 7's in common. 7 times what gives me 7? That would be 1. 7 times what gives me 28? That would be 4. Okay, then my 1 is going to shoot straight down, my 4 is going to shoot straight down. 1 times what gives me 9? That would be 9. It shoots straight across to give me 4 times 9, which would be 36. So now I've, cre um, I've completed all my factor puzzles to help me figure out the different ratio tables and help me complete the table. Now we're going to take the information that we have from the table and put it into a graph to give us a more visual um, interpretation of what's happening um, with the ratio of red paint to yellow paint in each of these different orange paints. So the first one is offbeat orange, and I colored it blue because I'm going to create my graph or my number line um, with blue for offbeat orange. So I'm just going to simply graph the points 4, 6, 
Got over four for red, up six, I'm gonna place a point there. Over eight, up 12 is my next number. Over 10, up 15. And then I'm going to connect my dots through zero, zero, as straight as I can to create a visual line showing offbeat orange in comparison to red and yellow paint with the ratio there. So that's kind of giving me um, a nice visual about how much red um, to yellow is that offbeat orange paint. Now I'm going to look at outstanding orange and I'm going to color it in green. And again, I'm just going to graph my points. 2, 8, 7, 28, 936 would be off of the graph. So now I'm going to graph my points um, to and create a line as straight as I can. And what this shows me is that outstanding orange, this is the visual um, of that showing the difference between the yellow and the red or the ratio of yellow to red. So students can make a couple of different um, statements based off of this and conclusions based off of this visual looking at the fact that offbeat orange has a larger ratio of red to yellow, then the outstanding orange has more yellow paint than red. So again, just taking the information from the table into a graph to provide a visual in order to make some conclusions. If you have any questions about 7.1, please make sure to see your math teacher.